right. Welcome to a filet crochet, which only makes me want to have fish. <laughs> I want to call it the filet of fish class. <laughs> mm. right. Kim will probably teach this a hundred times over. All right. So let me share my screen. So filet crochet. Um, has a lot of uses. It's really just a way of using spaces in your crochet, which we which are often called mesh. It looks like mesh, you know, like open mesh and double crochets to create blocks that can create a design. So I'm going to come back to this, but this is the beginning of a, a heart design. Um, and it's just a series of open blocks and filled blocks. Um, the only thing you really have to maybe check yourself is um, when you're making your, and depends on how particular you are, when you're making your double crochets, some people make shorter double crochets then they do chains. So these may not look like squares. They might look more like rectangles or they may look too short. Um, so you have options there. This happens to be a double crochet with a chain one space in between them. If you felt like you needed more space, you could do a chain two space in between. It would still just be counted as a space though or you could make an extended double crochet, which makes the double crochet a little bit taller. Um, I didn't find that it really made that much of a difference to me as I was going along, but you do have options if you feel like when you're working on something and you don't like the way it's coming out. Um, you do wanna watch your tension as you're making your spaces that you don't make them too tight um, so that they will block open and be a nice square. Um, the only other thing you really need to be able to do is recognize your stitches. You need to recognize that this is a chain one space and a double crochet. Um, and when you're counting, and I'm going to come back to this part, that um, if you've got a filled in space of double crochet, the filled in space of double crochet shares a side with the open mesh space next to it. And when you have several double crochet spaces filled in, they are also sharing sides. So um, when we look at the chart um, and we look at this, when we come back to this, um, you'll see how that plays out together. But otherwise, it's really very easy. So I have started, um, I've done one row here. All I did is I chained 26 stitches. 26 chains, excuse me. And then I did a, this end, I did a chain, um, I went into the sixth chain from the hook so that I could have stitches. I could have one, two, three, um, three stitches be my, act as my double crochet and still have a chain one space there. And you'll see as we come back across. And then I did double crochet, skip a space with a chain one, double crochet, skip a space, chain one. So it's all double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one. If you felt like after you're doing this row that you wanted a little more space in here, you could have done a double crochet, chain two, skip a space, double crochet, chain two, skip a space. You could have done that as well. All right. So here is an example of a filet crochet pattern. So this is what we're making. It's like a little coaster with a heart design inside. What's really nice about filet crochet is that you can really graph anything. You could graph an initial, you could graph an animal, anything that you can get a graph of, you can turn it into a filet crochet pattern. So my first row, all of my, uh, my odd side rows are on the right and my even side rows are on the left because I'm working back and forth. This was my, using my legend, 
The white box is a double crochet chain one and a double crochet, which creates the mesh, which I have done here all the way across. Okay. Row two, coming back as I flip it over, is going to have one, two, three, four, five open mesh. So um, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then it's going to have a filled in spot, which according to my chart here is consists of three double crochets. So I'm going to work across to that to show you how we work that. All right, so. I'm going to chain to the end. And chain four. So this counts as my first double crochet and a chain one. If a double crochet is three high, plus I have the, the fourth. All right, um, as my chain one. So then, so here, I'm going to skip the next chain or the chain space in this space and I'm gonna do a double crochet into the next double crochet, chain one, skip. So we're doing mesh blocks on top of mesh blocks. As you can see there. Okay. I'm working back across this way. So I need to have one, two, three, four, five mesh blocks. Chain one. And you'll know if you make a mistake. I'm going to skip the chain one here. I'm just going to make a double. And you end up with not a block. You end up with like a little triangle, which could be a design element, but it is definitely going to stand out. So make sure <laughs> you're putting that chain one in between your double crochets. I love these tulip books. So nice. I like my clover hooks, but sometimes it feels really nice to use a different one. So I have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So now I'm ready to have a filled in block. So a filled in block is consists of three double crochets. But the block is also sharing a side, two sides actually, with open mesh blocks. So I've actually already created the first side of my block with that double crochet. So I'm gonna put a double crochet into this chain space. And you have the option, you can either put the double crochet into, without a chain one in between, into the actual chain space, which is what I prefer, or you could put it into the actual stitch. It, it's total preference. It does look a little different. It does pull a little different. I think going into the actual stitch chain is a little fiddly and slows me down, but some people like that. So that can be a total preference. So that one I'm gonna leave like that. And then I'll make the third one in the top of the next double. So now I've got one mesh block. And now I'm ready to continue on with one, two, three, four, five open mesh blocks. I've already got the double crochet for my first open mesh block, one of the sides, chain one, and continue across. So as long as you can follow a chart, and make sure you, you recognize what row you're on, whether you're working for, you know, on the right side or the wrong side. And I, you could put a marker 
to help do that. Cross. This would be a really nice way to put, um, if you're doing a baby blanket, you can add a, um, so then my last one needs to go into, because remember my, my chain counts as a double crochet and a chain one. So I'm gonna skip, skip this one and go into the top of the next. And this uh, gets straightened out like all crochet with either a border or blocking. But now I've got the beginnings of, so here's the bottom of my heart and it will continue to grow out. All right, so I'm gonna move that one to the side because I worked a little further along in this one. And I wanted to show you, this one is ready to start row five, which consists of two open mesh on each side and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, filled in. So this particular pattern tells you that two red blocks equals five double crochets. So what they're, what they're helping you realize here is that the sides, you're not putting three in every single one because they have common sides and they share a side. So this is, three double crochets. This is one, two, three. And I've already shared a side, so I'd put another one here, four, five, six, seven. So three of these would be seven double crochets. So now I'm ready to do row five, which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks but I can plan that it's going to be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 double crochets, alternating between the double crochets and the chain spaces. All right, so I have done the two mesh open blocks. I already have my first double crochet. So I'm not gonna do a chain one after. And I'm gonna work double crochets all the way across. And once you get a little further in your pattern, especially a pattern that builds on itself like this, you can see if you're making you know, double crochets, making the blocks on top of the right space. Um, but like I was saying, if you were doing a baby blanket and you were doing it in double crochet, um, you could work, you know, work like that a little initial or a name into the corner by adding um, a little fillet crochet graph into the corner of it, it would be cute. And I've got some patterns to share at the end here with some different different ways, but um, if you are um, looking at crochet patterns, this uh, fillet crochet is a tag that comes up. So you can search, you know, search by that tag. Um, it's often combined with other techniques and I've got a couple of patterns to show you that do that with mosaic as well. Let's see where I'm at here. All right, so I knew I needed to have, I'm just gonna move this under the light so it's a little easier to see. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. How many did I think I needed? Mm -hmm. Two more. 
there, which makes sense because I need to go on top of this block and fill in this gap. And then continue with two open mesh blocks. So chain one. So I've got a nice pattern going here. So I could continue on and fill in, and I would have end up with this nice heart shape. And then this particular pattern then has you out of order, which just finishes it off. So you could see this as a block in a in a quilt, this or that I want maybe a dish you could do this as a dishcloth too maybe on a, a slightly finer yarn this is a worsted weight so that the holes wouldn't be quite so big but um, that could be really nice are there questions about fillet crochet it's really pretty easy I'm going to show you some examples and then you might have questions all right so this one is, um, you may have seen on Ravelry, this is uh, called Lucy's Kimono. And you can see it is making a diamond pattern with the filet crochet. Um, and it's basically just a, a wrap that comes across. Um, this one here is called the filet poncho, which is looks like little window boxes. It's all just open mesh and double crochet. And then this one where is it? it's got rows of, of filet crochet added to give this little zigzag design in it with just open spaces and combinations of open spaces. This one is in my queue to do the hotel of these shawl, which I think is so cute. And this is a combination of all different kinds of crochet, but um, the two like honeycomb shapes here are done with filet crochet, um, which give you that effect. And it's also got some overlay mosaic um, as well as uh, regular crochet. It's got some overlay down here at the bottom as well. And that's done in the sheep just stone wash and river wash, which is really pretty. Um, here's a tote bag similar with the honeycomb design at the top and in a this one's called the Favo Tote by Wish Upon a Hook. And I'll put the links to all of these on the website too. I thought that one was really cute. Was that Poncho the Life of Bees or something like that? Uh, this one? This, yeah. is, this is the Hotel of Bees shawl. Yeah, I did that yeah. one. Yeah, that one's really pretty. And then this one is done all in filet crochet, the cute, cute little sheep, and they've changed colors, obviously. But you can see it's just combinations of filled in mesh and open mesh and changing colors at the same time to get these cute sheep designs. Um, there's another one, I didn't it so clearly. This one's called the Juno Baby Blanket. You can see that. Um, and that it's just sheep. So you I, you know, insert anything here. You could, you know, graph, using graph paper, come up with um, letters or any kind of animal. And there's so many graphs out there um, that you could fill in. And that just makes a really cute baby blanket too. And this one, this particular pattern, it's called the Juno blanket pattern, has row by row directions as well as a graph. Um, so I, in all of the patterns I looked at, they all seem to do it a little different in that sometimes it's a chain two space, sometimes it's um, a half double crochet in, in deciding how they want the picture to look. But the, the idea is the same. You've got blocks that you're filling in either with, as an open mesh or with three and it's And I would say 99% of the time it's a double crochet, three double crochets to fill in a block. Okay. 
And that's all I have on huh. today for show today. I told you it was going to be short. <laughs> <laughs> so you can even do it with the lace weight that I'm assuming for like oh, doilies. Absolutely. You can, yes, yes. <clears throat> with any weight. Um, there were a lot of patterns with fingering weight. Um, there were a lot of patterns like the uh, Lucy's kimono. This one I think is done out of a whirl. There's several okay. rainfall kimono that's done out of a whirl. So just, you know, and it's, and it's just creating like the diamond pattern. Um, and you can play around with that too. So it's just recognizing that you're filling in blocks of space and those blocks share sides. So if you know that one block is three double crochets and you've got three blocks to fill in, that doesn't mean nine double crochets because they share sides. So you, right. you have to take that into account if you're only going, and there, there are a lot of charts. If you're not going from an actual pattern, if you're just looking at the chart. You just have to remember that those are sharing sides, particularly if it's something that's spread out um, and you don't see it necessarily building on itself right away. It, you, you could get yourself off course. So, gotcha. 